Good evening. Let me call to order this meeting of the City of Bloomington Plan Commission for February 12th, 2024. Um, just a brief overview of our agenda this evening. We have some uh, housekeeping to do. This is our first meeting of the year, so we will have election of officers and uh, a resolution uh, regarding uh, the departmental director. And we have a couple of um, petitions that have been tabled. Uh, those are SP 24-22, Cutters Kirkwood 123 LLC, uh, and ZO 34-23, uh, some text amendments to um, uh, the UDO. We have another petition that has been continued to a special session. That's PUD 18-23. That's the Sudbury Development Partners LLC um, project. Uh, and then we have one petition that we will hear tonight. ZO 45-23, uh, Indiana Recovery, Indiana Center for Recovery, LLC. Uh, so that's what's uh, coming up, but let's start with uh, calling the roll. Can I start? Ballard. Ballard. Here. Braille. She's Zoom. Zoom. Cyborg. Here. Cockrip. Korodke. Here. Kinsey. Here. Smith. Here. Stossberg. Here. St. John. Whistler. Here. And I believe uh, I need to update the uh, role there to uh, reflect that Commissioner Smith I'm has joined us. I'm here. Oh. Did she say Smith? I thought she said St. John. She did after Smith. Oh, she said both of you. Okay. She said Stossberg, too. Okay. We got them all. I said here to somebody. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we do have a quorum, and uh, we can proceed. We uh, first have some minutes to be approved. We have the minutes from the November 6, 2023 meeting. Uh, do we have any... Um, uh, comments, corrections, um, or objections to those? If not, can we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve the November 6 minutes. And a second. All right, any final discussion? All right, let's call the roll on uh, approval of the minutes from November 6th. I, do we need, yes, we need, we need to call the roll on everything, right? Since we have a remote uh, participant tonight. Yes. Okay. Yes. Steve Orr. Yes. Cochran. I will oh, sustain just. Cole Rodkey. No, Chris. Yes. Oh. Okay. Did he say yes? Okay. Cole Rodkey. Yes. Kinsey. Yes. Smith. Abstain. Yes. I wasn't here. Stossberg? Abstain for the same reason. Whist Whistler? Yes. Okay. Ballard? Yes. All right, so the minutes are approved. We will now move on to reports, resolutions, and communications. Uh, we'll start with... Um, I'm sorry. Anything from staff? Uh, Jackie Scanlon, Development Services Manager, um, Interim Director. We have a couple of things to do, um, as Mr. Whistler said tonight, for housekeeping. Um, and the first of those, I think, is going to be election of officers. But first, I want to acknowledge we do have some new members here. Um, we have Chris Smith has joined us, um, along with Hopi Stossberg. So welcome. And we want to say thank you to Karen St. John, um, especially, and Ron Smith, who uh, served previously last year and for all the, uh, all the work that they put in to help us um, with the, all the work we did while they were here. And we'd also like to say we didn't meet in December, so we didn't get to give our big official sign off to Director Robinson. And just wanna say publicly, thank you to him for um, you know, his 21 plus years of um, work and um, uh, kind of devotion to the city and um, helping us um, as the director in our last few years here in the department. So wishing him all the best. Um, so election of officers, I'm going to just share for those of you who are familiar with this process. Um, 
this body uh, elects for themselves. Oh yeah, let me make this bigger, thanks. Oop, you're fine. You elect among yourselves um, a president vice pre and vice president, so that is for your own body, and then you also uh, elect a member of your own, of a plan commission member to the Board of Zoning Appeals as well as an alternate, a plan commission member to the Platt Committee as well as an alternate, um, and then you vote on a number of other um, appointed positions uh, not from plan commission, and then um, one for the county plan commission uh, as well. So I put on here who did what last year. This is always kind of a fun who wants to do what they want to uh, what they want to volunteer for for the year. Um, so last year, as for a number of years, uh, Mr. Whistler has served as president, and uh, Ms. Kinsey has served as vice president. Both have indicated they would be willing to do that again, but that if anyone else is interested, they're happy to uh, let you uh, do that also. So that will um, be something to discuss. And then for the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, Ms. Burrell has been serving as your appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a number of years, and Ms. St. John was the alternate last year. Um, and then Ms. Kinsey has your appointment in lieu of um, Mr. Seabor to the Platt Committee. Uh, and then we have uh, Mr. Smith, uh, Ron Smith was the alternate last year. So I think we just start with president and tick through them. Um, and these are the ones that we need to fill. You can see the ones that are already filled in. Those are staff appointments um, that we've worked with the various departments on who they would like in those positions. Uh, so we'll just ask you to vote for those unless you have you know, concerns about when we can talk about it. So does anybody uh, want to nominate? So there would, they'll each be done by um, a roll call vote because uh, we have Flavia on Zoom. Um, and so the first one we'll talk about is president. Turn it over to Brad. Does anyone want to nominate uh, for a president? I would nominate Brad Whistler. Or president of the plan commission. I'll second. Are there any other nominations? <laughs> no declinations. <laughs> Nope. Last call for other nominations. Oh, look away. All right. Well, there's only one nomination I will, uh, I will accept, and I guess we'll go ahead and call the roll on, yep. on that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and call the roll on Brad Whistler for President of Plan Commission and for 2024. Yes. Kolrodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Thank you for your confidence. Um, we will now move on to Vice President. Any nominations for Vice President? Jillian Kinsley for Vice President. I'll second. Any other nominations for Vice President? Seeing none, you accept your nomination? I will accept, but I will always say that I am happy to um, entertain other nominees if they're so interested in leading this auspicious group. <laughs> but I'm happy to continue serving. All right. Well, seeing no other nominations, let's uh, let's call the roll on Jillian Kinsey for vice president. Go ahead, Lee. Cochran? Yes. Kowrocki? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. All right, congratulations. Okay. Uh, we'll move on now to Board of Zoning Appeals. So for Board of Zoning Appeals, there are two plan commission members on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mr. Ballard is appointed via the mayor's office, so he already holds a spot there. And so we need someone else to fill the spot that you vote in and then also an alternate. 
And do we need to uh, vote on those separately? Yes, please. Okay. And then I don't know, Ms. Burrell, if you want to speak about whether or not you're interested in continuing uh, filling that role. Yes, I can continue uh, in a Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you. All right, I'll move Flavia Burrell as our appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. All right, any other nominations for our appointment to Board of Zoning Appeals? All right, seeing none, let's call the roll on Flavia Co Burrell. Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stotsberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochran? Yes. Congratulations, Flavia. Okay, and so then you also vote, vote an alternate. I don't think Karin appeared at any hearings last year. I think Brad maybe did it the year before. Similar thing, one or zero hearings. So it's kind of a worst case scenario. Uh, Ms. Burrell is uh, pretty available for those meetings if anyone's interested in being the alternate. Yes, I can confirm that I had to attend one meeting as the alternate two years ago. So um, her attendance has been impeccable. Um, do we have a nomination for BZA alternate? Yes. All right, I'll nominate Chris Smith as our PC alternate, or I mean BZA alternate. Second. All right. Any other nominations? All right, let's call the roll on Chris Smith for BZA alternate. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. <laughs> Strasburg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochran? Yes. Korotke? Yes. All right, next up we have Platt Committee. Um, currently serving is Jillian Kinsey. Do you have an interest in continuing? I'm, again, I'm happy to continue serving in this regard. It's a four o'clock meeting, which is sometimes difficult for me to race out of my own office. But um, if someone else is interested, it's a great experience. Learn a little bit more about the real details here of, <laughs> of how plats are approved and reviewed. Is that enticing? Yeah, I, I feel like we don't have many options here. <laughs> Anyone else uh, interested in the exciting world of plat committee? I think there is a special prize for whoever's name appears the most on this this list at the end of the night. I'm but. eager to hear the, what the prize is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 We're negotiating. Okay. Okay. That. That would be great. Okay, okay so, so we, we have, have a nomination for uh, Jillian Kinsey. Was there a second for yeah, that? Yeah, Chris second, yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, call the roll on Jillian Kinsey for Platt Committee. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochran? Yes. Korotke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. <clears throat> Congratulations again. Okay. Uh, and now I think uh, we need a nomination for alternate. It sounds like Chris Smith has uh, 
<laughs> offered to do double alternate duty. All right, I will move for that. Chris Smith, take PC alternate. Second. All right. Are there any, any additional nominations for Platt Committee alternate? All right, seeing that, let's call the roll on Chris Smith for PC alternate. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochram? Yes. Korodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. All right, congratulations. Um, so now we'll move on to the staff uh, appointments which uh, we will need to individually Correct. Yeah, uh, I think call the do. roll on. So let's just, we'll just kind of move through these quickly. We don't need to do any nominating, right? So I think we could, uh, the motion would be to appoint um, and then you would just uh, read through it. As a CBU staff member appointee to the Platt Committee is Elizabeth Carter, the alternate is Brian Blake, the engineering staff member to Platt Committee is Roy Ayton, and the alternate is Kendall Kenoki. But do we need to have a separate roll call on each name here? No. So okay. I think we can, just, we can that would be call, the right, So we just need a motion that we uh, adopt this slate. To the Platt Committee, yeah. Okay. And then I think we would do the hearing officer separate just because it's not um, kind of related, yep. if that's okay. Okay. Yep. Someone like to make that motion? Okay. I'll move that we appoint this slate of staff to the Platt Committee. Second. Uh, okay, so the motion is, uh, just for the record, that we are uh, appointing Elizabeth Carter as CBU staff member, Brian Blake as CBU staff alternate, Roy Aiden as engineering, and Kendall Noki as engineering alternate to the Platt Committee. All right. All right, let's call the roll on that. Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochran? Yes. Korodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. All right, we'll move on now to hearing officer. And so we saying, do these yeah, two together. together. All right, so we need a motion uh, on a appointment uh, of the hearing officer and the Hearing officer alternate. I'll move that we appoint Ryan Roebling hearing officer with Karina Pazos as a hearing officer alternate. Second. All right, let's call the roll. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cochran? Yes. Korodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Okay, so for the MPO Plan Commission member, um, that is not something you'll vote on. Uh, it is president by rule. And then if someone else on the board uh, wants to be a proxy for Mr. Whistler, that's something we can kind of work out. Jillian's done it in the past, but you all won't vote on it. I'm just letting you know that that's something we'll yeah. To figure so out. I think we can open that up. So historically, yeah, by by statute, I guess the president of the plan commission is the appointment to the MPO. I yes. historically have not been able to make those meetings consistently, so I've uh, appointed a proxy, and most recently that's been uh, Jillian. But I think. Uh, oh, I, I am happy to release any meetings. Although it's it's. Okay, I don't mean to undersell it. It's really interesting, and there's a lot of really important work going on with Safe Streets and some other, and I feel like we're really getting our groove here. We're county, city, MPO work. Yeah, I can, I can confirm. It is, it is one of the more interesting uh, uh, committees to be on. It's a lot of, a lot of important work. Um, does anyone else who wants to um, signify an interest in in the Metropolitan Planning Organization? No? Chris? Okay. Too much? 
No? All right. So we can, yeah, we can have that conversation also offline. Yes. I can try to nudge certainly. some other, some certainly. others of you to, <laughs> yeah, this is something. Stake, but uh, yeah, it is important to have a member there if we can. I do know that the MPO staff is very grateful that Ms. Kenzie has been attending and involved in the last few years. Um, so yeah, not that it has to be her, but hopefully right. we'll have someone. Not that it yeah. has to be me. Right. That's right. Well, please do. Yeah. Let me know if, uh, if you have an interest uh, in, in that, otherwise we can uh, move forward with. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to serve as proxy in this regard, but I do think it's nice to get some other voices on that group. So, you know, if there's a, if there's a time when I could make it impossible to go or it would become impossible for me to go, it would be good to know if that there's someone else who might be willing to yeah. participate in I this mean, meeting. Alternate. An yeah. alternate to the. Well, I could even rest. be alter. I, I okay. can make right. it we from could, time to we time. Can, we can do a little better job of. Kind of <laughs> the MPO in the 90s, how about that? Uh, Nobody cared. You're that. dating yourself <laughs> at all. It's really advanced <laughs> since the 90s. Good to know. They have computers now. Obviously, <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so the last appointment we do need you to do tonight is the uh, Plan Commission appointment to the Monroe County Plan Commission, and that is a non-voting ex officio member, and Mr. Cockrum has been doing that, and so Chris, I don't know if you wanna say whether or not you're willing to keep doing that. No, no, I, I would like to unless somebody else would. Great. You're in. I'll nominate Chris Cockrum for the uh, county ex officio role. I'll second that. All right, any other nominations? All right, see none. Let's call the roll on Chris Cockerham for ex officio appointment to the County Commission, County Plan Commission. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Cockerham? Yes. Korodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. All right, congratulations to all on your new and sometimes not new positions. Um, Great. I think we have, speaking of new positions, we have oh, another. Oh, yes, uh, but your, yours aren't temporary. Uh, you all have to vote on um, the uh, director for the department. So as you know, Mr. Robinson is not with the city anymore. So I am doing interim directing. So just so everyone here and all of our many fans at home know, I am not uh, interested in doing the job full time, but I'm happy to help until we find someone, uh, you know, uh, who is interested in helping lead the department. Um, so I am doing that now until we find that person. Uh, and then otherwise I'll just be in my regular development services job, which I like. Um, but we do have to, uh, you do have to vote to appoint me uh, as uh, interim. And then when we fill the position, you'll then vote again to appoint someone permanently. So we typically do that through resolution. So that was in your packet, and I can answer any questions. Are there any questions? So I think um, what we're looking for here is just a uh, motion to adopt uh, resolution RS01-24 as it's uh, presented in the packet. Motion to adopt RS0124 for the appointment of interim director. Uh, second. All right, any discussion about this? Okay, let's call the roll. Oh. I believe there is a search underway. Sure, yeah, yeah, so I can update that. Um, I don't mean to make it sound like it's not a good job. It's a great job, and we ha they, have, uh, they have advertised it, and they're in the process of um, interviewing people for that. Um, yeah, so it was not one of the ones that was pre-appointed uh, before the year started, so they are doing the uh, interview process currently. Um, yeah, that's So it. once the administration makes a selection and an offer, and that offer is accepted, we'll have another one of these yep, resolutions exactly. to appoint the new permanent director. All right, uh, let's call the roll. Seymour? Yes. Cochram? Yes. Kovrodke? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? 
Yes. Harrell. Yes. And then, Mr. Whistler, we have one more um, staff update. Yeah, we have one more report um, from our long range planning manager, Ryan Roebling. Great. Planning services manager, sorry. Okay, uh, thank you for having me here. I'm Ryan Roebling, hearing officer, as I was uh, recently appointed. Um, so uh, just a quick update about the Safe Streets and Roads for All um, action plan we're developing. I think most of you have heard of it before as we sent out an email blast asking for a steering committee member, but uh, I'm gonna give a quick update because we have news at the end of this that I'll share. But uh, the goal of the project is that Bloomington streets should be safe for everyone. Uh, each year, more than 40,000 people die on America's roads, and almost 1,000 of those are Hoosiers. So our goal is to create an action plan that will ensure that Bloomington streets are safe for everyone. So uh, the SS4A program was created by the Federal Highway Administration, uh, utilizing the safe system approach, which prioritizes the elimination of crashes that result in death, deaths and serious injuries. Uh, the SS4A program seeks to complete its goal by funding transportation safety initiatives uh, with $5 billion of funds over the next three years. So what is Bloomington doing? Uh, we're working on crafting the SS4A compliant action plan, which will again seek to eliminate roadway deaths and fatality, or fatalities and serious injuries within the city. There are several steps that we will continue to take over the next uh, few months in order to complete that plan. The planning efforts include analysis, equity consider considerations, and project prioritization strategies. Those are all very important in uh, traffic safety initiatives, and we will, the final plan will include a step from each one of these eight items. All right, and then, so this is the big reveal here. Uh, we are launching the uh, SS4A web map and survey, and I want you all to complete it. I'll send it out separately here. Uh, since this is probably the worst way to deliver uh, a website. But uh, the, the SS4A web map will empower residents to voice their concerns and suggestions regarding roadway safety in Bloomington. The uh, interactive map enables users to pinpoint safety concerns, share their thoughts and suggestions for improvements, soliciting location-based feedback on issues such as speeding, inadequate roadway lighting, and insufficient sidewalks. So, uh, like I said, I'll follow up with an email to all of you and hope you will complete it and I hope all of you will too. Thank you. Oh, and I'm also happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, go ahead. As you mentioned the interactive map, I'm, I'm guessing that that might have like a broad area. Um, are you kind of isolating it to the city's jurisdiction by trimming the data so people can't see it? Or do you think you might collect county data? And if so, I think that would be really great. Um, and I was just kind of curious of what kind of uh, way we can, you know, uh, create a conduit for us to understand from the county's perspective of uh, what you're identifying if they're able to pinpoint locations outside of the city. Sure, that's a great question. Um, the, there is no control to prevent you from selecting outside of the city, so we would absolutely be able to collect um, data from outside the city, and we could share that with the county, our county partners. I think that would be amazing. Thank yeah. you. I've been serving on this committee, or the task force, and have been really impressed with the map trend, so I think it's, it's a great tool to better understand where we have problems with pedestrians or with, um, you know, I mean, dare, scary fatality information about roadway safety and about pedestrians and bikes. But it's really pretty incredible. So I urge everyone to have a look at it 
and identify where there's missing information. I, I think the, the idea is to make the map even more complete than it is. It's reliant, if I remember, on police uh, officially recorded information, but it allows for additional information. So if you have been uh, noticed that this is a high incidence of near misses, um, that can be added to the database. That's correct. Um, not to correct you, that is all. There is a high injury network map that is has been released to the steering committee. Has not been released publicly just yet. It will follow shortly, and I will probably give you another short update on that because uh, that is the pivotal point outside of the community feedback. Um, so it'll show where crashes that lead to fatalities and serious injuries occur, and then we'll have a further community discussion about what that means and what decisions we should make. This is just for the survey portion of the map, which is uh, areas where you feel unsafe. So if you have an intersection that you particularly feel unsafe at, or safe, um, so we can know what we're doing well, um, then or intersection or uh, complete street or anything uh, in between. And uh, hold on, I can show you. There's a bunch of options that you can fill out for when you find an area that you don't find safe, and you can pick people drive too fast, there's not enough lighting, et cetera. So there's lots of information that you can give, uh, and we hope you give a lot of information. Can you restate then to how widely this is being deployed and how long you're accepting feedback? Sure, yeah, so this is being deployed because community feedback is the, sorry. Oh, this, you're the first group. I'm gonna to talk to every group that will hear me. Uh, it was launched at five o'clock, so yeah, it's, I've only had an hour of it being open. So uh, I'm gonna to go to bike ped right after this. So, uh, and it'll be open for roughly two months, um, timeline dependent. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other? Reports, resolutions, or communications from staff. Um, and that was, you said it when you talked about the agenda, but for those interested, PUD 1823, the um, commonly known as the Summit PUD, the Sudbury Development Partners petition for the 140 acres um, east of Weimar, will be heard at a special meeting, special session on March 19th. Um, so that is a week after our regular session on a Tuesday uh, in this room at 530. And I believe we will be using the same Zoom link. So we will confirm that um, as well before the next regular meeting um, and have that online on the calendar online. Um, yeah, that's all. That is my actual last thing. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any reports uh, or communications from commissioners? All right, well then we will move on to our petitions for the evening. Uh, I think our one and only petition is ZO 45-23 and we've got Eric Grulick here to present. Thank you very much. Um, so this is a request um, for Indiana Center for Recovery for several properties, nine properties, that is, uh, on the west end of West First Street. Um, so the petitioners are here today to request a map amendment uh, to rezone these properties from the current zoning of resident. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Ron.
guess I could have joined on here and unshared it. All right, thank you. All right, is it visible? Okay, thank you, Tron. All right, so, so just quickly backtracking here. Uh, so this is a petition from the Indiana Center for Recovery um, for nine properties at the end of West First Street. Um, so the petitioners are here tonight to request a map amendment or a rezone um, for these nine properties from the current zoning of residential small lot R3 um, to the mixed use health care zoning district. Um, so as I mentioned, these are at the west end of West First Street. Um, there were several residential buildings on these properties. Uh, a few of those have been removed. There do remain uh, several residential buildings that would be demolished um, should the rezoning petition and then site plan approval be approved at a later time. Um, so the petitioners are requesting to eventually uh, develop these properties for group care homes. Um, there would be one building located on the north side of First Street, one building on the south side of First Street. Um, however, in the R3 zoning district, um, a large group care home, uh, similar to what the petitioner would like to construct on both sides, is not a permitted use. Um, so the properties, um, as you guys may be aware, several of the Planning Commission members here tonight um, were on the Planning Commission when we adopted the Transform and Redevelopment Overlay District. Um, so that was adopted as part of the departure of the Bloomington Hospital from this site. Um, so the TRO uh, was a specific overlay district. Um, that guided uh, the redevelopment of a large chunk of the property here that the hospital and surrounding offices used to occupy. Um, so all of these properties were zoned mixed-use health care. Um, we looked at the proper redevelopment that we wanted to see for that area in terms of land uses and building scale um, and came up with the Transform and Redevelopment Overlay District, which was approved in 2022. Um, these particular properties um, are not in that TRO district. Um, they are just on the outskirts of it. Um, so these were rezoned to the R3. Um, so the properties to the north that are in the TRO are zoned mixed-use neighborhood scale. Um, the adjacent properties to this are zoned R3. Um, so the petitioner is requesting this rezone in order to allow for uh, the two group care homes uh, that they would like to construct on, on these, uh, these properties. Um, so this is the site plan that they would be seeking um, should they come forward. Um, you are not approving the site plan tonight. Um, the only thing that is being requested with this petition is simply a rezone um, from the R3 to the mixed-use health care um, because, as I mentioned, the group care home is not allowed in the R3 district. Um, it would be allowed in the MH. Um, it would be allowed also in several other zoning districts. Um, the RM and the RH district um, would allow for a group care home large. Um, but the petitioners have chosen to come forward with a mixed-use health care request. Um, so that is what we are evaluating. Um, should the rezoning be approved, um, there would be a site plan approval that would come forward at a later time. Um, but we are showing uh, the submitted elevations and site plan just so you can have some um, understanding of what would be coming forward with their petition um, should the rezoning be approved. Um, so the petitioner has been working with the neighborhood um, as well as with the petitioner's goals uh, on building size and location. Um, so they're looking at three-story buildings, um, roughly 45 feet tall. Um, that would happen on, on both sides of the street. So the elevation on the north side of the screen here uh, is for the north side of first, and the elevation on the south side or on the bottom of the screen is for the south side of first street. Um, but as I mentioned, again, these are just for uh, Res, uh, reference should something happen. Um, so with the rezoning request, as I mentioned, we are simply evaluating how does this fit with the comprehensive plan. Um, so the comprehensive plan designates this as mixed urban residential, um, and this is also within a focus group, the West 2nd Street um, and former Bloomington Hospital focus area. Um, so the mixed urban residential district has several guidelines uh, in terms of building size. Um, you know, it notes that this area uh, encompasses the older neighborhoods within Bloomington. So it typically has a, a 
traditional uh, block pattern um, with alley access, um, which certainly these lots do have. Um, you've got frontage on First Street, they're very small lots. There is not an alley that runs immediately adjacent to this. Um, however, the TRO district does promote the use of alleys within that district, um, so it's very likely and hopeful um, that an alley network will be created as we uh, see development within the TRO district. Um, in terms of land uses um, within the mixed, mixed urban residential, it does talk about um, different land uses, specifically other than single family being appropriate along the periphery, um, as well as uh, you know, more higher intensity commercial uses being appropriate along the periphery um, and along the classified streets. Um, while this particular location is certainly on the periphery, it is tucked very far back um, within the neighborhood at the corner of Walker and First Street. Um, you know, this district does have better frontage. The TRO district in general has better frontage along 2nd Street and Rogers. Um, so that is where we would most likely see a, a higher uh, uh, focus on commercial uses and more intense uses. Um, so while the petitioner's general land use for the group care home um, with the residential style buildings might be appropriate, um, we do have some concerns about how the placement of the mixed use healthcare zoning district um, would be located here um, at the corner within the neighborhood. Um, there's no other mixed use health care um, adjacent to this. In fact, there is no mixed use health care at all um, on the zoning maps. Um, we took that off with the UDO um, uh, with the updates in 2022 when this was rezoned. Um, you know, there's been possible discussion of having it maybe centered around the hospital, uh, but this would be the only place that we would have the mixed use health care district. Um, so it does seem a little bit out of place to have um, you know, the only zoning district for mixed use health care tucked back into the neighborhood. Um, while the petitioner's uh, petition could happen with this, that zoning will be there regardless. Um, so we have to certainly keep in mind um, the presence of this zoning district and any other uses that could come in um, should they leave or decide not to do their project. Um, so that is something that we do have some concerns about. Um, and so those are kind of outlined a little bit um, in our report of things to keep in mind with this. Um, so this is just the first of second hearings, uh, for, I'm sorry, first of two hearings. Um, so our, our recommendation, our staff report is to gather comments from the Planning Commission tonight and then forward this to the required second hearing in March. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions um, from the Planning Commission. Thank you, Eric. Is there a representative of the petitioner who'd like to add anything to the presentation tonight? And there we go. Yep. The petitioner, I'm here also to help if, he, if there's any questions. I am unmuted. Thank you. Um, this is Cheyenne Riker, General Counsel for Haven Health Management. We manage and oversee uh, Indiana Center for Recovery. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for your civic service. Um, I don't have a whole lot of comments, just kind of a little bit of history on this site. Uh, back in 2021, I think Mr. Grulick mentioned this was rezoned to um it was rezoned from mixed use healthcare which is what it was to this new zone and we call it a new zone because really um this specific location on first street is not a residential area it was at one point but it is so surrounded by healthcare uses now immediately to the north there's a building that's full of healthcare uh tenants immediately to the west is Indiana Center for Recovery. There's nothing immediately to, or there's a, there's a series of buildings, I think some of which are healthcare immediately to the east. The only adjacent residential use is this trailer park immediately to the south of our, of our assemblage. And when that process was being undertaken by city council, there's a specific reference, and I went back to the YouTube video because I remember the hearing, and I objected and I explained that, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to carve us out these specific parcels where Indiana Center for Recovery operates, carve us out and call everyone else something other than us, um, which we were, we were de designated as residential, and everyone around us, other than the McDowell Gardens neighborhood, and this very specific portion of First Street, was designated as RN or R2, excuse me. And my argument was, why can't we be in the same zoning district as we're currently in, or at least keep us with the zoning district to the north? 
And the comment that was made was, well, they can always come back. And I understand why city council did what they did. Redrawing a zoning map is no small task. And I'm sure most, most of us remember it. Um, it took a long time, a lot of comments and a lot of meetings um, and a lot of money to handle that matter. But at the end of the day, what was suggested was that we come back when we're ready for a rezone. So when we bought these properties, our investment backed expectation was that this would be a mentor in the MH zone. Um, we bought these properties and I, Mr. Grulick mentioned that there are several prop houses that would need to be demolished. They're actually, we wouldn't need to do any more demolition. We've gone through all the demolition that we'll need to do to accomplish what we're seeking to accomplish. Um, and so what we're really looking to do here is carry on our initial uh, goal, which was to build two new facilities, which were just described um, and which you've seen pictures of. The photographs that of, of the elevations that were prepared were prepared by Doug Bruce. And um, that's a, actually, I think the third or fourth rendition of those uh, elevations. We did the initials, Doug and I went back and forth with our CEO. We came up with some new ones. We took them to the Neighborhood Association. The neighborhood Association, uh, I think it was primarily McDowell Gardens, had some pretty serious objections to our initial. Um, it was kind of an, a little bit cold. It looked like a lot like a healthcare facility. Um, and they said, look, if it were more residential in nature, in, in aesthetic, then we might be more, um, more open to the possibility. You know, they didn't make any firm commitments, which, of course, I don't blame them. But but what they ultimately said was, let's see if we can work together, and, and we certainly agree, to come up with a better design for um, for these buildings from an elevations perspective so that the aesthetic aligns more with the residential use. So that even if you're rezoning, at least it looks like you're in a residential area. So that's what we did, and that's why we came up with the design that we have. This isn't our final product. Doug and I are still back and forth. We definitely want to have another meeting with the residents to evaluate um, what those elevations are going to look like as a final product. Um, and I know you're not here to develop or to 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 um, make a decision on the site plan, but it is important when you look at you know what this is going to look like, big picture. You know, if you're looking for an area that's residential in nature. Aesthetic is a big part of that, and we intend to make these buildings as aesthetically pleasing as, as possible within kind of a general residential framework from an aesthetics perspective. So what we're asking is mixed-use health care, and I know that maybe there's no place else in the city that has mixed-use health care, but we're only asking that because that's where we were when we bought it, and we're just asking to be placed back where we were as was suggested back in 2021 when we when we uh, went through this remapping process, and so respectfully, that's what we would request was would be that you would you would uh, support our petition as it goes forward to city council. I don't have anything further. Thank you. Um, we will now go to uh, questions from. Uh, the commission uh, before we do just just to uh, make sure we all understand where we are in, in in process on this our role here is to recommend uh, to the city council uh, whether or not this should be rezoned uh, correct that is correct yes yeah. so you're simply making a recommendation um, to the common council right so we'll have two hearings uh, on this here and then we'll make a recommendation uh, as it forwards on to the council and then if it were to be approved by the council it would then come back to us if and when there's a, a site plan to to be approved and, and when they're ready to actually uh, develop this correct all right. all right thank you are there any uh, questions from uh, commissioners either for staff or for the petitioner uh, commissioner and right Randolph I just wanted to uh, mention um, if you could go up where it kind of had the lots with the numbers um, it, so it, I'm looking at uh, connect Explorer it has um, aerial imagery of from 2022 and as you can see the lot 1009 and 1007 those structures don't exist anymore and I just figured I'd bring that to your attention 
Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Commissioner Stasberg. Uh, yeah, just for my own sake, I think this is mostly a staff question. Um, so what other zoning categories would allow a group home besides um, the one that they're proposing to switch it back to of mixed use healthcare? Yep, so great question. Um, so almost literally, so group care home large is listed as a permitted use in literally almost every district except for the three lower classified residential districts. Um, so other than the R1, R2, and R3, they could do a group care home in just about any zoning district. So a follow-up to that is um, what other types of uses would be automatically allowed in mixed-use health care that would maybe, like, I guess I'm thinking about the idea of, of, I mean, it sounds like the petitioner is just wanting to rezone back to the way it was, but there was a deliberate um, effort to make this area more residential. And so I'm not saying that a group home can't be more residential, but is there per perhaps a better rezone I guess I'm asking a staff opinion yes. regarding uh, allowing um, for this concept of a group home, but ensuring that other things would not be allowed in that space as a mixed use healthcare zone. Yeah, so that, that's a that's a tricky question um, because you know we we are you know somewhat um, restricted in terms of giving advice or guidance to people when they file a petition, and we simply review what they submit. Um, so in this case, you know, they've chosen to submit for the mixed-use health care. You know, as we mentioned, you know, there are a whole range of zoning districts where this use is allowed and possibly might be more appropriate here. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, with this particular overlay district and with the redevelopment of the hospital, we were trying to focus on redevelopment of this area for units, dwelling units, um, and, you know, the mixed-use health care district does not allow for any other zoning, any, any other dwelling units. Um, no duplexes, no multifamily. Um, so it would really kind of be bringing us further from the goal of what we were trying to accomplish with the TRO uh, in terms of allowing residential units and diversity within here um, to rezone this back to the mixed use healthcare district. Does that answer? I think so, thank you. Okay. Other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Cochran. Just follow up on uh, Commissioner Strasburg's question. It, it, uh, can we engage real quick with the uh, petitioner? Um, uh, you're you're certainly welcome your question, to ask them a question, yes. Yeah, did you, um, uh, Mr. Riker or Mr. Bruce, did, did you guys consider any other uses? Because, I mean, I would agree with, um, with Eric and his assessment that that's a little bit more restrictive use. I completely disagree with Eric on, on the MH. I think the petitioner's initial thought was is that this is what it was originally zoned and what his, what his plans were, so thought it would be easier to go back to that. But I understand what Eric is stating also, that when you look through the allowed use table from the UDO, what other uses are allowed. Um, you know, I think MN, for you know, uh, medium scale, I think there's some other some mm -hmm. other ones as well. That if that, I don't know the procedure. You know, if and again, Cheyenne needs to probably jump in here on it as well. Um, but I think that was the initial idea was that it was MH. So going back to that was probably going to be easier than mm -hmm. trying to come up with something else and and say, well, this is what we want. It, mm -hmm. His his rationale was this is what his whole development and he has some other buildings, uh, you know, already used for his recovery center. And then I think the Bloomington Hospital or one of the ambulance groups just built an ambulance center just to the east of us on the north side of the street. Mm -hmm. And you've got the eye center, you've got some other medical use around them. So they were just trying to stay with what they thought was near them. Mm -hmm. and I, I'll let Cheyenne jump in. So any, uh, go ahead. There, um, no, Doug's exactly right. We were simply asking to be placed back where we were when we bought the properties. Um, 
I, do I disagree with, with Mr. Grulick that we could do this in a number of other settings and zones? I don't, not at all. Um, may they have been more appealing possibly, uh, but at the end of the day, what we're looking for is just to be placed back where we were. And that's why we approached it in the way that we did. Um, and it looks like a healthcare zone, physically, maybe not from a mapping perspective, but physically, if you drive through the area, that looks like a healthcare zone. And that's not going to change whether you change the map or otherwise. And so MH is perfect here, in our opinion. It was perfect when we bought the properties, and we didn't really see the need uh, for it to be changed. We made the objection. City Council said, come back to us and ask for a rezone. And so we're taking them up on their offer. Great, thank you. A quick question for Eric. Um, on a medical use, what, what the zoning class would that fall under if somebody wanted to do? I mean, where, where would that be permitted? Um, well, so it, it depends on, um, you know, exactly what the medical use is. So medical offices, for instance, mm -hmm. are just classified as medical, uh, or it's just business professional office. Um, medical clinics, um, where you're administering uh, some, some degree of treatment, um, are allowed in the MC, the Mixed Use Corridor District. Um, but any facility that requires overnight stay, um, you know, out or you know, some kind of inpatient stay is only allowed in the MH district. So the MH district, you know, does allow for offices and you know hospitals. Obviously, that is a specific land use, and then any uses that have overnight stay. Um, so those are the, the main differences in the uses. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Seaboy. In um, reviewing the staff report and the discussion about the comprehensive plan, so we're, we're hearing about what it looks like and feels like today, um, but zoning's generally, my understanding, more focused on what the community wants it to look like in the future. So can you just speak to the comprehensive plan and how the request fits with the vision of the comprehensive plan? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the, the UDO, the zoning code, is meant to accomplish the vision of the comprehensive plan. Um, you know, so the comprehensive plan looks to the future and then the UDO looks at how, how do we accomplish that. Um, so obviously, you know, when you go out there today, um, you know, it looks like hospital uses because that's what it's been zoned for and that's what the uses are for the past 60 years. Um, but now that we have that hospital has left, you know, we expect a lot of these uses to possibly leave as well. Um, so they're going to remain, but the zoning and what we want to see with the comprehensive plan was the accomplishment of more dwelling units within the city um, in the near downtown area. Um, so that is why, uh, you know, we came up with the transport, transform and redevelopment overlay. That's why there were, you know, several years of focus group hearings um, to engage the community and the citizens of what we wanted to see for this area. Um, so the zoning district and that overlay district is meant to accomplish that vision looking into the future. Um, so yes, you know, it is going to take a long time, um, possibly, you know, a few years to see things start to redevelop. Um, you know, we've already got inquiries on several properties or possible development. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking to the future uh, to try to get this to be transformed and redeveloped into a more residential uh, use um, with providing more dwelling units um, and hopefully, you know, uh, some owner occupancy, but a diversity of housing. Um, so that's why, uh, that's what the TRO was supposed to accomplish. Um, and that's why, you know, these properties were rezoned to residential and all of the mixed use healthcare was removed from this area. map in the comprehensive plan so you can see the rectangle that circles the three is the um, special area for the hospital um, and uh, so though the remapping wasn't done uh, until you know 2021 actually um, this comprehensive plan is from 2018 and went through a many many years uh, process for those of you who were involved um, so the plan for this to not be medical has been known and widely agreed upon for a number of years at least since this time obviously when this document was adopted and the special you know it was called for a special area plan because the hospital was leaving um, uh, because while there was you know you can see here this is the old mh um, and so the properties we're talking about are here along First Street in this area. 
but there was always R3 directly to the south. The reason it's MH is because there's a giant hospital, you know, immediately to the northeast, and that's gone now. And we've seen a lot of the users, the supportive users, they've also left. A lot of people moving to the um, rental spaces over by, like, the Kroger on the east side or places that are near the bypass so that, you, so that they're... Um, users can get to the hospital quickly. Uh, and this particular user, Indiana Center for Recovery, they have a number of units along this street. They have five or six buildings already that they operate here. So when he says, oh, it's surrounded by medical uses, it's surrounded by their own medical uses. It's a campus that they have you know, created, and which is fine and was allowed under the previous zoning. But that zoning changed and, uh, you know, based on a comprehensive plan that was approved by the community. So we can't, you know, I think that's kind of what Mr. Seabor was asking. When we're asking for rezones, it's not always, oh, hey, what was there before? We want to do what was there before. We changed it because we want it to be something different going forward. And so though that isn't necessarily in line with the plan of this particular user, it is in line with the plan that we adopted as a community, which is the comprehensive plan. Uh, and so those, uh, this whole area, as Eric said, was rezoned, um, some into the TRO, some to different uh, mixed use. There may be another more appropriate mixed use, but we think healthcare is maybe too, we're, we're just c kind of, torn about whether healthcare is too on the nose uh, to, you know, identify these properties as only being allowed for healthcare in an area where we're desperately trying to encourage um, other types of residential as well. So that's kind of where we're uh, stuck, I think, at this point. Can I just follow up on that quickly? Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit more about why MH was removed from the map and and what was done if if the if the plan is hey we expect all of this medical use to move um, certainly it can't move in proximity to the new hospital in the same way it was uh, proximate to the old hospital because there's there's no private ground around that the new hospital so can you j maybe just talk a little bit about what was the thought with the map and what do we expect in terms of that migration, is that realistic or is, is this gonna remain sure. to have a lot of medical uses? That's a great question. So we have seen a lot of migration. We've seen a lot of these buildings, like especially on the north side of Second Street, change over into other uses. We've seen them rehabbed and other sorts of like, there's you know an architecture firm that opened along there. We've seen other uses in the multi-tenant centers along there turn over. So we have seen that already happening. Um, I think one thing that the UDO does I don't know if w well is that a lot of the uses that are allowed in mixed use healthcare are allowed in other districts. So they can go into other places on the map even though MH isn't mapped. So like Mr. Grulick said, there are a number of other districts that allow this particular use. It's not the use we have a qualm with, it's the district and whether or not the district is appropriate with the land use, the future map, the future land use map. So I think a lot of the uses that were in this area we were worried when the, I mean, I, I'll say myself, I was worried when they announced where the hospital was gonna go, because it was like, where are all of the businesses that are here, you know, in this part of town going to go? Because there's no room um, over there and uh, we can't control, you know, state property, so there was no way to ensure that there would be auxiliary locations right by the hospital. But we have seen that people, and you know, Mr. Cockrum or someone else could probably speak better to this than I, but we have seen that users have moved into little spaces that may have been, you know, um, personal service or small office or something like that, just on the east side of town and kind of spread out in a little bit different way than they were here, where they were all really kind of uh, together. I don't know, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think partially. I mean, I guess the second part would just be then, why does MH still exist in, in the code if it's not gonna exist on the map. Yeah, so that's a good question. And, you know, like I was mentioning with the list of permitted uses, like the only main use that is exclusive to the MH that you couldn't get in another MC district is a hospital use. 
Um, so, you know, the, the medical clinics, the offices that accompany those, you know, those are all allowed in the MC district, which you see along the bypass, um, you see along 3rd Street, you see in the area over by the, the hospital. Um, so that's a great question. You know, the MH district might be something that, you know, now that the hospital is located on IU land, you know, they're probably going to be there for a while. You know, we don't see, you know, the, the need um, for another hospital use within the community. The MH district might be something that we, we look at getting rid of. Um, but, you know, we didn't map it because, you know, the area where the hospital is now, a lot of that land is owned by IU, so it's already zoned institutional, so we don't have control over that. Um, but a lot of those uses are already allowed in a lot of the area around the hospital um, in the mixed-use corridor district. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Kinsey. I have a question again about kind of going back to the comp plan because I think that's one of the things we're being asked to reference is is what's the, how does this relate to what's envisioned in the comp plan or what the future look is supposed to be? And the one thing that struck me as I thought about the comp plan is the um, claims about Bloomington being a regional health care center for South Central Indiana and how much we need this kind of counseling and, and service a, a, that a group home would provide. The, the other thing that struck me is about the um, equity of access to substance use um, counseling and facility. And, and I just wonder if maybe staff could talk a little bit about how this relates to some of those comp plan goals and statements. And if, if I'm off base on what is relevant, please just tell me that. But I think it's important to clarify what parts relate in the comp plan. So is that a question that you have for us or something maybe yeah. more for the petitioner? Well, to uh, maybe a little bit for both. I mean, I think it's, it's just an interesting um, way to think about this case is what is it advancing for the future or what is it um, what are the claims about what it could advance? Yeah, so a group, a group care home is just a residential use. Um, you know, it is, while it is a specifically defined use, um, that is because there are specific state and federal uh, laws that, that govern some of that. But for the most part, it is just a residential use. Um, so it's certainly that use in and of itself, you know, it is a diverse use, uh, does provide for the needs of the community. Um, so it does certainly align with the comprehensive plan in that regard. Um, but, you know, as, as we kind of keep coming back to, you know, we're looking at it from, you know, what the request is, is for a rezone to a specific district. Um, you know, it's not just one use, but it's anything in that district. Yeah, I wonder if the petitioner would want to respond to that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm speaking from a comp plan. I understand the uses that are permissible in the UDO, but I just wondered if there was a connection there. Sure. So what I would say is we look at this from a perspective and one of the one of the mentioned one of the members mentioned it a moment ago is the comprehensive plan plan looks forward and what, what you're trying to accomplish is you're looking at what the, you want the area to be like and the way we see it at the first street that entire area where we are to the north is healthcare that's not us to the west and to the east a lot of those are not our facilities. Do we own some more facilities in the area? Yes. So to get to your question, the future of that area, the distant future may be residential. The future of that area in the immediate future and the foreseeable future, in my opinion, I think a lot of us can agree, is healthcare. And the healthcare is not leaving. There's the eye center, there's a number of counseling centers locally that do not belong to us. And so that area of Bloomington is a central hub for these types of services. And as far as the comprehensive plan goes, if you're looking forward for the foreseeable future, those services are gonna be rendered in this area. There might be a time to revisit this you know, type of use in that area, but at the end of the day, the folks that live there or the folks that own those properties are gonna to continue to use them for healthcare purposes. And so that's the future of that area. Um, you know, maybe 20 years down the road, some of those properties are bought by developers and they turn residential. But at least at that point, Indiana Center for Recovery site is set up as a residential site. And so, um, and because these, these group homes are residential in nature. Uh, so if we decide to leave and someone comes in and buys us, that's already a residential uh, project. So I think as far as the future is concerned, um, this supports the comprehensive plan because it is forward-looking. 
forward looking at least for the foreseeable future. Thank you. I believe uh, Commissioner Burrell had a question. So uh, this question is for um, the staff. So what kind of zoning would be recommended for this type of business? Uh, I know they are going back and, and asking on MH, but what other zones that will, what kind of zoning they can use that it will fulfill the same purpose of their business that will not go against their business plan? Uh, are there any type of zoning that they fit that would work for the purpose of what they are trying to accomplish? Um, yes. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, almost literally any zoning district um, other than mixed use healthcare uh, and the three residential districts, the R1, the R2, and the R3, um, they all allow for the group care home large. Um, so any of the multifamily districts, um, the neighborhood scale, mixed use neighborhood scale district, um, the commercial districts, um, you know, any of those uh, allow for the group care home. And those are permitted uses, uh, not conditional uses? Right, they are, they are permitted uses. Um, however, there are some use-specific standards um, that go along with the group care homes. Um, in our staff report, I did point out that one of the use-specific standards are that there has to be 300 feet of separation um, between two group care homes, which this would not meet. Um, so that is another hurdle um, that they are going to have to overcome um, should the rezoning even get approved. Um, so that's, there are, as I mentioned, there are some use specific standards, um, but it is a permitted use. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking is um, I just want to get away from nomenclature and figure out what works for them and what works for the city. So uh, that's why I was asking, you know. Thank you. For specific uses. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Tron. Technology is great. I've been able to pull up the comprehensive plan and the uh, UDO. But to my question is, the request is mixed use healthcare. Is there any uses there that staff feels isn't appropriate? Uh, to kind of you know kind of flip this conversation around, so. Is there anything there that seems to be not ideal um, in that zone? Um, you know, so other than the, I mean, it, it's hard to say because, you know, the zoning right now is R3. Um, you know, so we, we rezone this from MH to R3 with the goal of accomplishing dwelling units. Um, you know, we, we didn't, we purposefully did not include this in the TRO. We purposely did not rezone this to MN, so the conscious decision was made, we don't want commercial uses back here. Um, you know, we don't want high density buildings back here. Um, so that, that conscious decision and thought process was already gone through of, you know, we, we just don't want those uses here. So it's not that there aren't uses in the MH district per se, we just don't want that district back here because we want more units. You know, the MH district doesn't allow for any dwelling units at all. Um, you know, the group care home is the only use in there that accomplishes any dwelling units. So, I mean, I would almost argue there's, there's nothing in the MH that we want here. Um. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner uh, Stasberg, go ahead. I'm just looking at the map and wondering about the property between the 1009 West First and the corner of Walker Street, where there it looks appear it looks like there's four lots. And the petitioner just mentioned that idea, like there's no near future possibility that that they see much residential and that it's all healthcare. But I see four lots right there. Like, are they owned by the same person? Is there like and, and maybe we don't know that information right now, but that's just something that I see on the map in terms of envisioning the future of this space. 
So do you know anything about that from staff perspective right now, those four lots? Sorry, I don't have any specific knowledge on the adjacent properties, um, and certainly we don't know what the property owners might be thinking about for their long-term plans. Um, you know, what we, we have not seen is more people coming into this area, um, you know, offices and the like. You know, they are, they are looking at other areas. They are looking at places close to the hospital. Yes, there are things that are ingrained here, um, but they, they could be gone, um, you know, within a few short years. You know, they're already looking to the future. You know, they certainly are aware uh, that the area has been rezoned. We want to see housing in here. Um, you know, and once things start to happen, um, you know, people are like, oh, I see what this guy's doing. I want to do kind of the same thing. It becomes a little bit more realistic. Um, so it's, it's hard to say what people are thinking uh, that the, the owners are. Additional questions from commissioners? Commissioner Cockrum. I'm not saying the petitioner would do this, but if the petitioner chose to decide on a, a different approach, I'm not a big fan of the mixed use healthcare because it has so many restrictive uses. But if they were to choose, I mean, obviously it's their choice, what would that process be? Would they have to start from the beginning or? Um, yeah, so they would make a new filing because the notices and what they filed was specifically for the mixed use healthcare district. Um, so they would make a new filing for you know, a different zoning district, um, send out the public notice letters, the, the legal ad would go in the paper and then um, you know, this could be placed on the next agenda. Well, I don't think it could be on the, literally the next agenda, it would probably be uh, April. Uh, Commissioner Burrell, your hand still. Did you have another question? Oh, go ahead. Yes. So my question is to the petitioner. So the property, so just trying to establish um, the time that you purchased the property knowingly that it was going to be, the zoning was going to change or did the zoning was changed after you purchased? I'm just trying to, to know uh, if you knowingly purchase the property knowing that the, the, the zoning was going to be changed or it was changed after you purchased? We, we bought these properties, the vast majority of these properties, if not all of them, and I don't have the dates in my head, with, like I mentioned, our investment-backed expectation was that it would be MH when we were ready to move forward with construction of these two new buildings. So, I don't remember the exact dates. I was involved in them all, but I don't remember the exact dates when they were purchased. But I know that most of them were purchased during a time when the zone was MH, because our hope was eventually to use it in a manner consistent with the MH district. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Any more questions from commissioners? Go ahead. to this position in general. I ask a lot of questions. So you mentioned, and I had noted it too, about the idea of group homes needing to be at least 300 feet apart from each other. Is that true even in this RH district? Or is that just for any of the other zoning districts that a group home could go in? Uh, no, I believe that's every zoning district. Okay, thank you. Hypothetically, if this was rezoned as requested or to some other rezoning district that would allow these, could what would could they develop the proposed land uses as shown illustratively to us? Uh, not without a variance um, from that use specific standard that has the spatial limitation. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Just a clarification then, Eric. I just want to make sure I understand this. So the group care home um, specifications, the use specific standards that are identified in the proposal would apply even in other zones as well? So the Yes, it, yes. Would, it would apply in any zoning yep. district. Um, group care homes have to have a 300 foot separation from yep. another group care home. So that's regardless of whatever of other zoning codes that could be yes. considered. Okay, thanks. Any more questions from commissioners? 
All right, seeing none, we will now go to public comment on ZO 45-23. If you're here uh, in the chambers, just step on up to the podium here, state your name for the record. You'll have up to five minutes to speak. If you're joining us online, uh, click on the reactions button in your app and then click on the raise hand option to raise your virtual hand. We will do our best to recognize you in the order in which you have raised your hands. Uh, and uh, we'll start right here in the chambers. Thank you. Um, my name is Isabel Piedmont Smith. I live in the, the McDowell Gardens neighborhood and I am the District One representative on the Bloomington City Council. Um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak today. Um, the uh, ICFR developers did uh, reach out to the McDowell Gardens Executive Committee of the neighborhood um, and so some of the executive committee members as well as myself attended a meeting um, on one of the ICFR properties on November 29th to hear about this rezone request. Um, and uh, as Mr. Riker indicated, um, there was negative feedback from the neighbors about the request. Um, and uh, there was a general feeling if it were to go ahead, uh, we would want to see something that is designed to better fit into a single family neighborhood rather than this um, kind of monolithic uh, large uh, fa facade building that was shown and is part of the plan commission packet today. Now I just checked uh, with um, Doug Bruce who says there are new um, drawings available, elevations, and I think briefly they were shown on the screen, but they were not part of the packet. So I have to say I'm disappointed and uh, there was no you know, notification to McDole that the designs had changed. But aside from all that, I'm opposed to this rezone um, for other reasons and mainly because uh, it does not fit in with the plans that um, the city council adopted when we did the new zoning maps and discussed this area uh, moving from a medical use to a more housing focused use. To be clear, um, temporary housing for folks who are getting treatment for substance use disorders, while important, it is not the same as housing. It is not what we consider housing in our comprehensive plan. Um, and one of the main goals in our comprehensive plan is housing affordability, housing supply, neighborhood stabilization. These are three, well, actually I can include the fourth one as well, housing planning and design. Those are the four important goals in our comprehensive plan that I believe are contradicted by this rezone request. The Indiana Center for Recovery uh, demolished existing affordable housing on West First Street when they moved into the area um, between 2017 and last year. Um, and as uh, Interim Director Scanlon noted, they claim they're surrounded by medical uses. Well, most of those uses are their own uses that they created uh, when they converted um, older affordable houses to uh, the um, their own uses. Now, I, I'm in favor of substance use disorder treatment. I think we need it. People in our community need it. People in the region need it. But this is a for-profit business. It, um, most of the clients are not from Bloomington. And I need to uphold our own plans and our own neighborhood integrity, which has been severely um, hindered by ICFR. Um, I wanted to mention that um, although a group care home is allowed in all districts except for R1, R2, and R3, um, in districts R4 and MN, mixed use neighborhood, uh, it's restricted to 20 residents. Um, and the plans for each of the buildings far exceeds that. So even if the zoning um, were approved for uh, you know, mixed-use medium, for example, like we have closer to the Beeline Trail in this area, 
um, they would be limited in what they could build. And as aforementioned, they couldn't do it. They'd have to get around another rule that we have, uh, which is the 300-foot spacing. So all around, I am not in favor of this rezone. I do represent this neighborhood, and I live in this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Paul Ash. I'm a member of the executive committee of the McDowell Gardens Neighborhood Association. And um, I could go on, but we just don't want them here. Thank you. Thank you. Is there additional public comment? I don't Any? see anything on Zoom, but someone had asked me earlier if public comment had taken place, but now I think maybe he's gone. If you do want to raise your hand or send a message to the host, uh, we'd be happy to uh, add you to public comment. Just one more reminder, if you're online and you do want to join, um, yep, raise the hand or Send a message to the host, and if you're here and want to keep coming, just step up to the, the podium. This will be last call for public comment. Nothing online. All right. We are then back to the commission for any um, final questions or discussion. Commissioner N. Ryan Randolph. Just when I was bringing up uh, the 2022 ortho imagery um, and noticing some of the structures weren't there. I actually missed one um, on the north end or north side of the road. Um, so I guess my question is, is have we done a site inspection to know if any of those structures still exist? Because again, I'm looking at 2022. So I'm very curious if those last two homes are there still or not. Uh, I, I know that we've issued demolition permits um, for several of those structures. To be honest, I have not gone out there to physically look and see what's on the ground today or not. Um, I'm certainly happy to do that and have that information by next time. I, I think that would be helpful, or at least I, it indicates, it has some indicators there that I think would be interesting to know um, what's still there and what has been removed. So thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Kinsey? or ask the staff if they can respond or the petitioner to respond to the comment from um, Isabel Piedmont Smith about the design changes. I mean, I realize that that was one of the objections raised by the neighborhood about the monolith structure and the fact that there were new plans. And I wonder if the petitioner can comment on that and, or the staff can comment on new plans. Um, I, I can just say from a staff perspective, we just had those given to us on Friday. Um, so it was well after the revision deadline and after the packet had gone out. So, you know, we did not have those in our possession uh, in any time to, to get it to you. Thanks. Petitioner, and I would, I would add to that that uh, Eric's right. I mean, the, they got those late. It's an ever-evolving process. And we're, I wasn't at the neighborhood meeting, so I'm trying to work with the client to figure out what the issues were and, and what we can change. So we've had two or three iterations, but you know, the client has assured me we're gonna meet with the neighborhood again. There'll be 3D renderings like we had originally um, and, and more defined. I, I think we've had a lot of good progress so far since what we first started with. And, and I, I would add about, I, I think there was a question about the houses. I, I believe they're all gone. Uh, the, there was a statement made earlier, some of those houses, I'll say a majority of them, were almost uninhabitable. Uh, and the issue was you had a lot of people living in them, they were unsafe, so some of those came down pretty quickly because of that. These weren't all, uh, you know, they, I, I, don't, I think they were just listed as contributing in the survey. They weren't, uh, 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 you know, anything notable or outstanding as far as historic preservation. All right, any other questions or comments? Go ahead. Hi, thank you. I have a few comments, and I'm going to try uh, to say them in order. Um, first, uh, with that comment that Ms. Kinsey just made, uh, we're not actually 
to my understanding, discussing the actual site plan. We're discussing a rezone. So it really doesn't matter in a lot of ways what that specific site plan is supposed to be, is we have to think about whether we want to make it mixed use healthcare. Um, and I think that it's important that we like stay on topic about that. Um, so in terms of some of the things that I heard tonight, uh, uh, one thing has to do with the appearance of that neighborhood. And um, I don't want to discount the residents of that mobile home park that are on, that are just south of that, of that site. And I did actually uh, ride my bike past that area right before this meeting. And the one large building that's over there right now on the south side of the street looks incredibly out of place. And maybe it's the time of year, and so there are a lot of trees that you can't see, but that mobile home park looks over there, and it looks really, really small next to that large building right there. And it, it, I think that it would be really nice if there wasn't something massive and big next to that mobile home park as it transitions into those uh, uh, larger structures to the north that are kind of more along that second street corridor. So in terms of that kind of like how it looks and how the transition looks and how maybe um, we were thinking about that two years ago, three years ago when we were developing those rezoning plans, um, that's a piece of that. Uh, secondly, this is only a block, two blocks from the Hopewell development site. And so the fact that the petitioner claims that it's gonna be healthcare and general healthcare uses in that neighborhood for the foreseeable future, I think is just inaccurate. Um, I think that the future of that area is residential because that is what that entire Hopewell site is basically moving towards. So um, I'm, I have a lot of concerns right now with that idea of moving it to the to the mixed use healthcare. Um, it feels like a step back instead of a step forward. Um, and I think that was all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Oh, I'll add my comments. I'm thinking the same thing. I think the zoning seems incompatible with what we've outlined in the comp plan. The zoning request is incompatible with what we've outlined in the comp plan, and the, particularly for R3. So it's, it, it, this is a tough one for me because it, I don't see how we can go against what we've outlined in the comprehensive plan. And I know it might seem like a simple request to go back to what it was, that that seems like a logical thing to do. It does seem... Um, that that really isn't that easy. We made a conscious decision as a community that we want more residential units, and I think that's uh, that is, seems very clear. Um, and given what we're trying to develop in that Hopewell neighborhood, I I don't see how we can do this. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how we can advance a business plan <laughs> that seems like they're. Um, already way down the road here for this, and I'm looking for another route to make this possible, but I'm concerned about forsaking these important residential goals we've set for this petition. Any other comments or a motion? This is a reminder, the staff recommendation is that we uh, continue this to the required second hearing on March 11th. Commissioner Seaborn. We continue ZO-45-23 to the required second hearing on March 11th. Is there a second? No. All right, any final comments before we call the roll on the motion? Okay, we're ready to call the roll then. Cochran? Yes. Co-Rocky? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stossberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Seabor? Yes. All right, the motion carries and uh, the petition is um, Continued. Thank you. That is our only uh, petition tonight. Are there any? I'm sorry, I have one quick question. Yeah. Did you give them an opportunity to speak again with their remaining time after public comment? 
to the petitioner. Uh huh. I did not. I'm I'm sorry. Is there was there? I any just didn't know. I just didn't know if you had anything, Doug. Okay, he's not there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. Uh, any other uh, items for discussion or announcements before we adjourn? All right, seeing none, uh, we are adjourned. We'll see you back here on March 11th. Thanks.